The Lord himself is our sanctifier. We discuss how God has made it possible for us to be holy unto him and the practical aspect of sanctification. We highlight some of the rewards of personal holiness. Let's rise to our feet please. And we're going to make our declaration this morning and uh, just declare what God has said about us. Let's do it loud, bold and strong. Hold your Bibles higher please. Let's say this together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I'm blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ. And a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him I am an absolute surrender. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Why don't you shake hands with people next to you please. And uh, smile at them and you may be seated. Let me try to do this as quickly as I can this morning. We are doing a series on the holiness of God. And I'll just quickly review what we spoke of in the first two Sundays. And then we will take this forward this morning. We began in the introductory message just talking about the fact that God is holy. That's his nature. And he wants his holiness to be reproduced in us and revealed through us. God is holy. And we said that this aspect of God's nature is the very core of his being, it touches every other facet of who he is. It's his core. The holiness of God touches every other aspect of God's nature. Meaning, when God, God is good, but in his goodness he will never violate his holiness. God is love. But in his love, he will never violate his holiness. What does that mean? He's not going to tell somebody, I love you so much, just sin however you want. <laughs> I'm giving you permission to sin. <laughs> I love you. No. He's love, but he never violates his holiness. So every facet of the nature of God is touched, is merged, is, is, is actually expressed in the context of his holiness. Holiness. God is holy. And He wants that reproduced in us. We also said that this holiness or this purity or this absolute sin sinlessness of God is also God's beauty expressed. We said when we talk about the arm of the Lord, we're talking about God's power. When we talk about the eyes of the Lord, we're talking about His omniscience. So when the Bible compares holiness to the beauty of the Lord. It's the attractiveness of God. So holiness is not something that will drive us away. God, you're so holy. Sorry, I can't come near you. <laughs> no. Holiness is not something that drives us away from God. Holiness is God's beauty. It's His attractiveness. It draws us to Him. God, you're so holy, I want to be like you. Because it's the beauty of the Lord. The holiness of God. And in uh, part two, we talked a little bit about that God being thrice holy. In heaven. There's only one aspect of God's nature that is repeated in this manner. Holy, 
holy, holy. It doesn't say good, 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 love, love, love. There's only one aspect of God's nature that's repeated like this, that God is worshipped like this. Holy, 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 thrice holy. Emphasizing this aspect of his nature. And so last week we said, God is so holy, everything about him is holy. He adorns his house with holiness. What does he decorate his house with? Holiness. The angels around him are all holy. And so, everything about God is touched by his holiness. And so in closing last week, we said, you know, how can we enter in the presence of such a holy God? There's only one way, through the atonement. It's the atonement that makes what is unclean, clean. It's the shed blood of Jesus that gives us access into the holiness of God. It's only that way that we can enter the holiness of God. He gives us righteousness. He gives us the capacity to stand in His holiness. So now as we progress in this study, what we want to start talking about today is His holiness... In me. So, God is love. He wants us to walk in love. God is holy. He wants us to be holy. So, who He is, is to be reproduced in us. So, we want to talk about how God takes us and helps us. Be like Him. And what does it mean to be holy? We'll do that today. And next Sunday we'll pick it up on talking on the practical side and how God works holiness in our lives. But let's first of all begin by understanding the fact that God Himself is the one who makes us holy. He said, one of His covenant names is, I am Jehovah Mekedesh. The Kadesh is the Hebrew word for holy. So God is saying, I am Jehovah, Mekadesh. I am the Lord, your sanctifier. I am the Lord who makes you holy. I make you holy. So holiness is not something you and I make ourselves into. Holiness is something God does for us. I am the Lord, your sanctifier sanctifier. I make you holy. We'll look at a couple of verses here from the Old Testament in Exodus 31 verse 13. Speak to the children of Israel saying, surely my Sabbaths you shall keep for a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I am the Lord your sanctifier. I make you holy. And you find that repeated in other places. I'll just make mention of Leviticus 20 and verse 8. He says, you keep my statutes, perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I am the Lord. I am Jehovah Mekedesh, the Lord who makes you holy. So in the Old Testament, we find that God pronounces several different things as holy. For instance, you'll find that he says, you know, the ground on which you're standing is holy. Or uh, he declared certain days as holy for, uh, to celebrate feasts. He declared the nation as holy. He declared garments the priests wore as holy. Uh, things that they brought in offering as holy. The holy anointing oil, the holy priest, the holy incense, the holy house, the holy field. So many different things. God said this is holy. Meaning I'm setting this apart for myself. And therefore I want you to treat it as holy. That was in the Old Testament. When we come into the New Testament. God calls us as his people to be holy. So here's what I want us to understand about holiness. That we are called to be holy. Holiness is a calling. For example, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in? Holiness. He called us 
He, invi- he gives us an invitation. He gives us a summons. Or in 1 Peter 1 verse 15. But he who called you is holy. You also be holy. So holiness is a call. It's an invitation given to us by God. He's, I am your sanctifier. I'd like to do this for you. Here's my invitation. Would you like to come? It's a call to be like him. And it's a call to belong to him. So what is holiness? It's a call to be like him. It's a call to belong to him. You understand that? Let's say it again. Holiness is a call to be like him. And it's a call to belong to him. So God's giving us an invitation. He says, look, I am the Lord, your sanctifier. Would you like to be sanctified? Would you like to be holy? I'm calling you. I'm giving you an invitation. Come and be mine. Come and belong to me. So what does it mean to be holy? To be holy is to respond to this invitation. That you and I say, yes, I want to be like you. And I want to belong to you. Now this is very simple but very important. Because holiness is not about don't do this and don't do that. Why you're not doing it? Pastor said don't do. Why you're not doing it? So and so said don't do. Holiness is not about rules and regulations. Holiness is your response to the call of God to be like him and belong to him. Let it sink in. It's very important. Holiness is not about rules and regulations. It's your response to the call of God to be like Him and to belong to Him. So then, why don't you kill? I'm being like Him. I belong to Him. Why don't you do this? I I'm being like him. I belong to him. It's not like I don't do this because pastor is watching. (laughs) Or somebody else has said. No, it's not about rules. It's not about regulations. It's about you saying yes to the call of God. To be like him. And belong to him. That's holiness. Amen. Amen. God gives us the quality and God gives us that state of being holy because he is our sanctifier. He is the Lord who makes us holy. He comes from him. We are only saying yes to the call. Are you understanding this? This is so important. It's very simple, but it's so important. You know, because the moment we start talking about holiness, people say, oh, so boring. Ah. When will he finish the series? No. <laughs> holiness. No, no, nothing very exciting. But when you look at holiness from this perspective, it's a call from God to be like him and for me to fully belong to him. Then it's a celebration of what God is to me. It's not about these rules. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't eat that. Don't wear that. Don't look like that. Don't. It's not about rules. It's about me saying, God, I want to be like you. And everything about me belongs to you. That is holiness. Now, how does God help us become that? How does God help us become that? We want to talk about that. Look at the practical side. So we're dealing with concepts and now we're going to go into the practice. How does God do that? First and foremost, we must understand that God himself has broken the power of sin over our lives. 
Remember, he said he is our sanctifier. So he is the one who has broken the power of sin over our lives. So when Jesus died on the cross, he not only paid the penalty of our sins, he not only became sin so that we could become righteousness, but he also broke the power of sin. And uh, Paul brings this out in the 6th chapter of Romans. I'll just pick out a few verses. In Romans 6 and verse 6, Paul says, Knowing this. So you've got to know this. Now many of us, when we don't know it, then we can't walk in it. So he says, Knowing this, that our old man, your old sinful nature. So you don't have an old man in you. You've got a new man in you. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That is the power of sin over our lives must be destroyed. That henceforth we should no longer be slaves of. So you and I are not slaves of sin because of the work of the Jesus did on the cross. This is so important. Because many of us are struggling. God, I want to be free from this. I want to be free from that. I want to be. Look, he did it for you. He broke the power of sin off of your life. He did it. Now this is very unlike a lot of other philosophies which say you've got to attain and come to a place of self-renunciation. You've got to get, give up and you've got to come out and you've got to work your way to this. It's so different where God says I do it for you. I break the power of sin over your life. And I set you free. From sin. It's very different. So that's the first thing he does for us. He says, look, I, I break this. And so in Romans 6, uh, Paul says, we have to reckon ourselves to be dead to sin. That means to count as a fact. Recognize this. It's a fact. And then he says, present your bodies. So two things. Re recognize this truth. And now you present your body as unto God. So he says, sin, sorry. You've been cheating me long enough. You have no dominion over me. Your power over me has been broken. Old man's dead and gone. I'm a new man on the inside. Sin has no more dominion over me. I am presenting my body as an instrument to righteousness. As an instrument to God. You got to reckon that. Recognize that. Say it. Believe it. Embrace it. First step. The next thing God does is. He makes us this new creation that is fully sanctified. That's very interesting. That means the person that you are on the inside, this new man. We know 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. So tell your neighbor, wake up new creation. <laughs> so the new person on the inside, the person on the inside is a new creation. What about this new creation? Some people say, I've become a new creation, but I have a sinful nature. Wrong. You're a new creation. You don't have a sinful nature. That was crucified on the cross 2,000 years ago. The new man on the inside, the Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 24, is created in the image of God in righteousness and true, sorry, true holiness. Do you know that on the inside, you are already holy, 100%. Perfect. Gold. Inside. The new man. And this is how God works. He completes the work for us in the realm of the spirit. And then he says, out of that, live. Rather than trying to tell us, here's my standard, work your way to it. He says, I perfect you. You are in the image of God, you are righteousness, you are holiness, I've made that, I've made that's who you are, out of that you live your life on earth. Are you understanding? So first thing, you got to see who you are on the inside, that you are a new creation, that man on the inside is in the image of God, it's righteous, it's true holiness on the inside. God did it for you. That means you are already sanctified. You're already it's done. You're already perfectly holy on the inside. He sanctified you. 
So then that brings us to the next step, which is the pro sanctification, the process of being made holy. Uh, the process of holiness. It's, and I want to just reference two verses, Hebrews 10, verse 10 and 14. In Hebrews 10, verse 10, talking about what Jesus did for us on the cross, it says, By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So when Jesus died on the cross, what did he do? He once for all sanctified you, made you holy, perfect, clean, everything gone. So say this with me, I have been sanctified. That's what the Bible says. We have been, sanctified means made holy. Just in other words, made holy. So through his cross, through his work on the cross, Jesus already sanctified you. The man on the inside of you, the new person that you have, that you are on the inside, is already sanctified. It's perfect. It's holy. But verse 14 is quite interesting. It says that by one offering, that is his death on the cross, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Hey, you, what is this? A little confusion here. <laughs> you said we have been sanctified. Verse 14 says, by his offering, he has perfected. But then it ends up saying, we are being. What is it? It's talking about two realms. In the realm of the spirit, you have been sanctified. In the realm of the spirit, you were perfected. But in our everyday life, we are being sanctified. But, remember... The being sanctified is an expression of a work that has already been done. It is not something you're trying to attain. It's something you already have and now you're living out of that. Are you understanding? This is very important. That God has already perfected you. He's already sanctified you. He's already made you holy, the Lord your sanctifier. And now you're just saying, okay, God, let that begin to affect every area of my life. Because you have made me holy. Amen? So this process of sanctification is simply you and me then bringing every aspect of our lives aligned to what God has already done for us. So let's talk about the practical side. Number one, the sanctification of our mind and our body. So now you say, okay, God, the thoughts that I think, I want it to be pure. Because you are my sanctifier. You've made it holy. So maybe in the past when we were unsaved, we didn't care about how we thought and, you know, we, we weren't bothered by unclean thoughts. But now, you're saying, God, I want my thoughts to be pure. I want to think on things that are pure, that are lovely, that are virtuous, that are good. Because I want my mind, I'm responding to this call to be like Him and to belong to Him. I want my thoughts to be like Him. I want my thoughts to belong to Him. Are you with me? So now, I'm bringing that. Let sanctification, let my mind, my thoughts be holy. My body, let it be holy. Let the deeds of my body, what I do in my body, so I don't steal, don't do those wrong things. I sanctify the deeds of my body. I just let it happen. Let his, the fact that he's made me holy now begin to touch the deeds of my body. Consecrate that to the Lord. The sanctifying, sanctification of our desires, our affections, our passions, talking about our appetites, our appetite for food, our appetite to sleep, our sexual appetites, uh, every other kind of appetite, our passions, our desires. So Lord, let it touch these realms. Let sanctification touch 
these realms. Are you awake now? All those who are awake, say amen. <laughs> so he's just saying, God, I'm responding to your call to be like you and to belong to you. So let my appetites belong to God. That's sanctification of our appetites. The sanctification of our dreams, our hopes and aspirations. That means our dreams, what we want to become in life. So maybe in the past, maybe I, you know, I just wanted this, to be this superhero person and, and do all the things that make me feel good. But now I'm saying, God, I want my dreams also to belong to you. That's the sanctification of our dreams, our hopes, our aspirations. Are you with me? I'm, it's belonging to you. It's no longer mine now, Lord. It's yours. I'm setting it apart for you. Sanctifying it to you. It belongs to you. So now my dreams and my hopes, my aspirations, what I want to become, what I want to achieve, begins to change. Because now I'm responding to the call to be like him and belong fully to him. So these things begin to change. They become holy now. The sanctification of our time, our talents, and our money. So now suddenly, what I do with my time, I say, God, my time also belongs to you. So I'm watching, how do I, where does my time go? How much time before the TV? How much time IPL? <laughs> How much time? Whatever. So I begin to sanctify. My time belongs to God. He has called me to be like Him and belong to Him. So I say, okay, Lord, my time. I'm not saying don't have recreation. We honor God you know, in our relaxation, recreation. I'm not saying don't do that. But we are watchful over our time, our skills, our talents, our money, everything. Now, God belongs to you. That's holiness. You with me? And then the sanctification of our family, our home, our possessions. So now you say, God, even my home, my children, my family, my possessions, they're also yours. They're also yours. You are the Lord, my sanctifier. You've called me to be like you and belong fully to you. So everything about me is yours. And it's just flowing out of the inner person that you are, that God has made you to be. You are a holy person on the inside. Now that person is beginning to touch all these realms. So God, it belongs to you. Amen? And that is God's holiness working in you and me in our lives. Next Sunday, we'll talk about the practical side. How does it happen? How, does, how do I actually consecrate these areas of my life? And, then, and today I said, okay, all these areas suddenly come to a place where we say God belongs to you. But for many of us, it's very difficult. Take, for instance, the sanctification of your hopes and dreams. Always, always, always you imagine being the superstar. And now God is saying, sorry change that. For well, some of us it can be a bitter battle. Some of us have no dreams, so that's very easy. <laughs> but some of us, we've been working hard, pursuing dreams. And now to give that up and say, God, that belongs to you, it can be a big challenge. But how does God work in our lives? Next Sunday. We'll talk about that next time. But before we close this morning, you want to talk about some rewards of personal holiness. And let's quickly go through this. You know, what, what should motivate us? Why is holiness important? In fact, when we started this series, somebody came to me and said, Pastor Nice, but why is all this important? Why is holiness important? It shocked me. Somebody even asked that question. <laughs> because I was under the assumption we all wanted to be holy. You know? like <laughs> then he asked me, but why is holiness important? So I said, okay. So we got to talk about why it's important. So let's very quickly mention some rewards 
of personal holiness. I mean, why is this important to you and me personally? Uh, there are many reasons that you can find in Scripture, and I'll just mention a few. Number one is that holiness is key to being part of Him. If you want to belong to Him, this is only the way. This is the way. Truly experience Him. And you pick this up very interesting in John the 13th chapter. In that chapter, Jesus is actually washing the feet of His disciples. And you know, uh, yes, the first obvious reason why He's doing it is to set an example. That you, you got to serve each other like this. But then, you know, if He had washed one, the feet of one disciple, that would have been enough of an example. I mean, the Lord washing one of his, that's enough. <laughs> you don't have to wash 12. And if you look at that passage very carefully, you'll find there's a, a, a second, probably more important reason. And it comes out like this when, uh, you know, Jesus comes to wash Peter's feet, and Peter says, Lord, no, 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 you can't do that. And then Jesus says, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. He's not saying, look, Peter, if I, if I don't wash your feet, no, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. It's not about washing the feet. There is a duality of meaning in this passage. And the second meaning is probably more important than the first. The second meaning is, if I don't wash you, if I don't clean you, if I don't bring this holiness in you, you have no part in me. It's, you cannot walk this life. You cannot be my disciple. When Peter re realized, oh Lord, not just my feet, my whole being. <laughs> was just wash oh, me wholly, completely. And then Jesus talks about being clean. So here's the first reason I feel it's so important. If we have to walk in holiness, if we really want to live out the life we have in Christ. To being part of Him. Second reason. It rewards a person holiness. His holiness is key to possessing our possessions. In Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17, it says, On Mount Zion, which is referring to the church in the New Testament, there will be deliverance, holiness, and my people will possess their possessions. So for God's people to experience deliverance and possess their possessions, one very important key is holiness. So why am I not experiencing deliverance? Why am I not possessing my possessions, my inheritance? Hey, there's one key. Holiness. Number three. Why? What are the reward of personal holiness? Holiness is profitable for all things. First Timothy 4 verse 8. Paul writes, for bodily exercise profits a little. We should take advantage of that. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and for the life that is to come. Godliness is profitable for all. With every area of your life, you're going to be blessed if you walk in godliness. It's profitable for all things. So think about a business man. You walk in godliness, you can sleep peacefully at night. You don't have to worry about somebody catching up with you the next day, accusing you of anything. Hey, godliness is profitable. Keeps you safe. Every area of your life. Number four, what is the reward of holiness? Holiness is the key to being a vessel of honor. If, if you and I want God to use us. Paul makes it so clear in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 21, if, a, if anyone will cleanse himself or whatever is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master sees. Want to be used by God? Here's another requirement. You've got to be sanctified, a vessel of honor. Number five, what is the reward of holiness? It's key to walking in spiritual authority. The Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will. What's the prerequisite? Submit yourself to it is true, you and I have the authority of the name of Jesus. It is true, you and I are seated with Christ in heavenly places. It is true, we are positionally in a place of authority. But if you want to walk in it here on earth, the practical side is submit to God. Resist the devil. So the authority we walk in is in proportion to our submission to God. 
Last one. The reward of personal holiness. It's the key to Christ-likeness. That means every aspect of Christ's nature being formed in us is connected to being holy. Because as in God, holiness is the core of His nature. Every other aspect of who He is is, is undergirded, is, is, is mixed in with holiness. So also for us, for us to be Christ-like, we cannot be Christ-like apart from holiness. Amen? So think about these things. Think about these things. The rewards of holiness in our lives. When we come back next Sunday, we're going to talk about perfecting holiness. How do we perfect holiness? It's nice to know that I'm going to bring all of these areas of my life to God, but how do I do it? What if I'm having struggles? What if I'm having some intense battles? How, does, how do I walk in it? How do I perfect holiness in my daily life? We'll talk about that next Sunday. Let's rise to our feet, please. And going to pray and close in a few moments. But as we stand here this morning, I want you to personally pray and say, God, you are my sanctifier. I acknowledge that. You are the Lord, my sanctifier. You are the one who has called me to be holy. You have called me to be like you and to belong to you. That's holiness. And this morning as I stand here, I say yes to that, Lord. I want to be holy like you. I want every part of my life to belong to you. Would you pray that right where you are? I want my mind and my body to belong to you. My thoughts, my words, and my deeds. I sanctify, Lord, my appetites, my desires, my passions. You tell God, Lord, my sexual desires, my appetites for everything, whether it's food or whatever, everything, God, I want it to be yours. Lord, I sanctify my hopes, my dreams, my ambitions. Even that, Lord, I want it, want it to belong to you. I sanctify, Lord, my time, my talents, my treasure, my money. And even these things belong to you, God. And I sanctify my home, my family, my children, my possessions. Even these, Lord, let it belong to you. They are yours. Heavenly Father, we want to be, like your word says, a holy people. Your own special people, your peculiar treasure, your chosen people. Be the Lord our sanctifier in each of our lives. Let every area of our lives be sanctified, be holy, be set apart. Let it belong to you, O oh God. And help us. To perfect holiness in the fear of God. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.